Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales of Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. A Rallying Cry, written by Space Paladin 15. Humanity was presumed to be extinct for decades. The Kyrule Empire had sought to assimilate Earth into its territories as a part of the expansionist policy. Given the option to surrender or face certain death, it was assumed the humans would choose the former. Their species had not even achieved FTL travel or made previous contact with alien life. What hope would they have in an interstellar war? The Empire gave a demonstration of its might, blasting a human lunar colony to smithereens with a nuclear assault. Whereas such a display of prowess would have evoked fear in the more sensible species, it only garnered outrage on the people of Earth. Just a few hours after the bombing, the United Nations sent out a defiant statement declaring war on the Kai rule. The Kai rule was stunned at the foolish rejection, but promptly bombarded every bit of land of Earth. They had to make an example of the humans, so that their current subjects wouldn't get any bright ideas. With all Terran cities laid to waste and their planet rendered uninhabitable, victory was declared. No sign of life was picked up on the surface by Kyrule's senses. It seemed that the species had been eradicated. Humanity became a little more than a footnote in the pages of Kyrule history textbooks. They were a lesson in what happened if you defied the Empire's wishes. But for members of the Resistance such as myself, they were symbols, heroes. The ones who had known that they would lose everything and fought back anyways. Direct rebellion would have been suicide. So the resistance operated in the shadows. We would sabotage ships, steal munitions, shipments, and spy on the Empire's offices. I worked as a barkeep on a nebula station, eavesdropping on off-duty conversations and feeding intelligence back to the rebel leadership. There is plenty of time to think in prison. I played my capture in my mind over and over again. It was just like any other time, passing through the checkpoint to the transport hall. But rather than giving me a quick glance over, I was accustomed to. The young inspector was staring at me with suspicion. I tried not to wither under her scrutiny. You travel too often, Nervin. I know you're up to something. On the ground, she barked. Two soldiers threw me roughly to the metal floor. I winced as a sharp pain stabbed through my ribs. They tore off my coat and rummaged through my suitcase. I knew the gig was up if they searched any further, but there was hope that they would stop there. Next thing I knew, my boots were ripped off my feet. I could barely think over the blood rushing in my ears and the pounding of my heart. The inspector pried the folded-up note from the soul, smirking in satisfaction. Well, well, what is this? A rebel spy. Throw him in a cell and throw away the key. In the first few days of my detention, interrogators dropped by. They demanded information about the resistance, offering slavery rather than death if I gave in. When I refused, they tried to beat the answers out of me. That didn't work either, so they stopped coming altogether. I figured the next person I saw would be the executioner. Between the total isolation, the tight confines, and the foul odor that seeped from the walls, it was enough to drive anyone mad. A guard only brought food and water once every two days, causing my body to wither along with my mental health. I tried to focus on things other than the grim situation, and my thoughts often drifted back to the last intelligence I had gathered, the information the Resistance had never received. A group of soldiers had been discussing the approach of a mysterious fleet of ships. Preliminary scan showed that they were outfitted for battle and of an unknown model. They were larger than any vessels known to the Empire, and they were closing in on Kyrule's space quickly. Hold posts had been placed on high alert. One morning, the sounds of gunfire and explosives shook me awake. It was a relentless bombardment. And from the desperation I heard in the shouts of the Kyrule soldiers, they were losing. 
and I wondered if it wasn't a martyr that I'd learned about at the bar. I marveled at their boldness, that they had some audacity to attack a military station that was armed to the teeth. Judging by the fact that I did not hear the hum of railguns charging, the attackers had knocked out the post's defense in the first strike. The shooting drew nearer by the hour, until it seemed to come from within the walls of the prison. Footsteps thundered down the hall, and without thinking, I called for help as they passed my cell. The door was kicked in, and I squinted for my bright light that poured in. As my eyes adjusted, I got a good look at the attackers for the first time. The appearance of these bipeds jogged a memory deep within my mind. A gasp escaped my lips. Humans! The man who busted the door lowered his rifle. Correct, Sergeant Paul Stewart of the Terran Army. Sergeant Stewart spoke in a heavily accented Kairuli, but his words were understandable. I was shocked by the soldier's identity. This was the same supposedly extinct species that us rebels had immortalized as martyrs. But the humans were here, before my eyes. Perhaps the destruction of Earth was nothing more than propaganda and imperial lies. We were told the humans were wiped out, I said. They thought they killed us all. We don't die that easily, the sergeant narrowed his eyes. You're in a much worse shape than the other prisoners. What are you here for? We're not freeing any murderers or violent criminals. I was a spy for the resistance. We were trying to destroy the Empire from the inside, I replied. Sergeant Stewart laughed, his expression turning much more friendly. Hey, resistance, huh? We didn't know there was such a thing here. Please, come with us. I struggled to my feet, swaying a bit. My atrophied muscles barely held my weight but I managed to find my balance. The human noticed my difficulties, and a glint of pity flashed through his eyes. He wrapped an arm around my side, providing support. I offered him a nod of gratitude as we hobbled down the hallway. Humans are heroes to the Resistance, you know. You inspired us. If you don't mind me asking, how did you survive? We moved as many of our people to underground bunkers as we could before we declared war. We still lost too many. It was just a matter of playing dead. The Kai rule assumed their bombs entered us, but there were survivors. For decades, we have waited, studying your technology, your culture, your language. Once humanity was divided, but now we were working towards a common goal. Our army comes seeking revenge, to pay the Empire in kind for what they did to Earth. I frowned. You wish to destroy the homeworld. Sergeant Stewart shook his head. No, we wish to destroy the Empire. We will liberate the oppressed, destroy their military, and topple their dynasty. We will hold them to justice for what they have done, or we will die trying. One last question, Sergeant. Can I join you? I don't see why not. We're always looking to add to our ranks. The humans inch closer to the home world day by day. The anger fuels them on a march towards destiny. I'm happy to be along for the ride. More members of the resistance flock to our ranks each day. It has fallen upon my shoulders to contact the underground to recruit rebels to the cause. Some insurgents still won't take up arms directly, but they're happy to supply what intelligence they can. After living among the humans for a short while, I've concluded that they are every bit the mythical, larger-than-life figures our stories said they were. Despite everything that has happened to them, they still spouse the values of freedom and equality. They spare civilians, they fight for the common man, and they alleviate suffering where they can. Resistance members will join Terran troops today for our first ground deployment, and I only hope that our courage can match theirs. We've sewn a quote from the human history into our uniforms, translated into Kairuli. It is becoming something of a rally cry. Give me liberty, or give me death. End of story.
The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it click with energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I would just like to give a quick thanks to T5 channel members and patrons. Silithia, Parky, Feudic Yol, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Angry Marine, Lord Azrakal, and White Van 420